Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 8 in the how to make a 2D platformer course. I know it's been quite a while since the last one but I've been, I've been working on some pretty awesome stuff. First off some of you might know that I've started a new course uh, where I teach C sharp. So if you want to become really sharp on that uh, please go ahead and, and visit the course and, and have fun. So it's on the screen and uh, also uh, it's going to disappear from the screen now because here is the all new Brackies developer forum. I showed it off in the last video also uh, in the C sharp course, uh, but I just quickly want to show you what's going on. So if you go to forum.brackies.com, uh, you can join uh, now and, and become uh, a part of this uh, quickly expanding community. There's an answer section, so if you find anything difficult, please just go ahead and ask a question. There's plenty of discussions. There are uh, possibilities for showcasing your work and getting feedback and collaboration. Also just recently uh, launched a resources section, so there's plenty of cool assets and, and place to go uh, to learn and, uh, and use in your game. And uh, also the tutorial ideas category if there's something you want to suggest to me. So instead of writing me an email, this is much better because both I and all of the other users can answer and other people can see the answer too. Cool, so uh, let's just get started with today's video. Uh, as always, I've opened up Unity. And uh, today we are going to be looking at shooting. Finally, we are going to do some shooting. So um, to go ahead and get started, let's go ahead and uh, look at the player here. So right now you can see that he has uh, some different objects attached to him. And uh, we're going to be focusing on the arm here and we're going to put a weapon onto that. We're going to be doing some array casting uh, to, uh, to actually fire uh, some bullets. Um, which we are not going to get really graphical with, with yet, but we are going to lay the foundation. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. So to do this, first off, we want to get a cool sprite. So go to the Astronaut Sprite Atlas, and let's uh, expand this. Let's find the pistol, and let's just drag it into the hierarchy. So there it is, the pistol. Uh, let's censor the transform here if it isn't already. And you can see it's lying right here. Now we can put that onto the arm and we can drag it over and position it on the arm here. Something like there looks pretty good. I think we can live with that. Maybe just pull it down a tiny bit. There, looks pretty much perfect. And it's of course up to you whether or not you want to uh, want to have it in front of the arm or behind the arm, in front of the player and all that. Uh, you can see if we select our arm, it's on the player sorting layer and it's all in layers two. And the player is zero. Uh, so we've made room for weapons actually. So we can go ahead and select the player here and just type in one and so it will be between the arm and the player, which I find look pretty great for weapons. Cool, so uh, now it will follow when we hit play. You can see that our gun is following our arm around. Uh, and that's just what we want. Uh, but what we also want to do is create an empty object from where we will uh, draw out the ray cast. We will draw out the line. It's also the place where we are going to spawn particles in a later video to make cool graphics. It's basically just the place that we're going to shoot from. So let's just go ahead and hit create. Uh, game object create empty or you can just do control shift n and let's rename this to um, let's do fire point and let's drag this under the pistol let's reset the transform and now let's drag it up here let's try 0 0.05 we're gonna need a little more so let's do 0 0.58 it's too much 6 0 0.056 work, uh, works pretty great. And now let's just drag it over. You don't have to be all that accurate. I just wanted to type it in so you could follow along. And uh, and this will, will do just fine. Great, so uh, always make sure that it's the value is 0. 
Cool, so now that we have uh, done that, we can go ahead and create our weapon script. And that will do stuff like emit the raycast. It will probably also do some graphics work. It will handle, handle the fire raid and then later apply damage to the enemy. So uh, let's go ahead and click on the pistol here, hit add component. And you can see I've already made one here. So let's just go ahead and delete that. And that was just for testing purposes. So let's go ahead and uh, click on the pistol, hit add component, new script, of course of type C sharp, and let's call this weapon. And now when we double click this to open it up in Mono Develop, we can go ahead and create our weapon script. So uh, first off, let's declare some variables. What are we going to need here? Uh, well, first off, we are going to need a fire rate. So we're going to make a public float so we can edit it inside of Unity called fire rate. And we're going to set this equal to uh, zero by default because we both want uh, the player to be able to hold down the mouse button and then it will fire in intervals. But we also want the player to just... Um, uh, or we want some uh, weapons to be uh, just single burst, meaning that you have to click for each time for the weapon to fire. And instead of making a boolean that we check for called single burst, uh, we will just check that if the fire rate is, is complete zero, uh, then it's going to be a single burst we weapon. So this right here is going to be single burst. Then we have a uh, public float which is going to be the damage that our weapon is going to do. And we're just going to set that to 10. Then we have, uh, let's actually, uh, yeah, let's make that a capital D. And then uh, we want uh, the, our last public variable, which is going to be our layer mask. And you're going to see what we will need this for laser, uh, later. Um, let's call this not to hit. And it's basically going to do, um, it's basically going to tell us um, what we want to hit. So uh, we, when we make this variable, uh, actually, let me just go ahead and show you. So when we save this layer mask, it's probably not a type that you've seen before. You can see just like we have our fire rate and damage appear, we also have this uh, layer mask variable appear. And it's basically just a list of all the different layers inside of Unity where we can check off if there's something we don't want our laser to hit. And there definitely is. We don't want the laser, um, and I, when I say laser, I mean the raycast, to hit our own player. We only want it to hit everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and select the player. And also, we don't want it to hit the ignore raycast layer, where we might put something la uh, later. It's an automatically generated layer where you put all of the stuff that you don't want to be hit. Of course, when we do this, we also make, need to make sure that when we go into the player and look at the layer, that the player layer is actually selected. So I mean, you can go ahead and change this for children also. Uh, I'm not going to do that because we only have colliders uh, attached to uh, the um, the player object and not all of the child objects. So if you don't have this layer already, you can just, of course, go ahead and add a layer and write it in here and then go back and change it. Cool. So heading back into the script, uh, we are going to need some private variables also. We are going to need a float that is going to be called time to fire equals zero. So we're going to default that to zero. And then we are going to uh, go ahead and create a transform that will store our fire point like this. So in the uh, start function here, actually, let's make that the awake function, uh, which is also sometimes used for initialization. Uh, we are going to go ahead and type fire point equals transform dot find child. So we're simply going to search for the fire point as a child of this object. You can see that our fire point is a child of pistol. So we can simply just search for uh, the child, the children of pistol and just instead of using uh, get a game object, which will search for everything. 
Uh, so find shell and then just input the name, which is in our case is Firepoint. And then we're going to go ahead and just um, do something that is great to do whenever you're creating larger scripts or working multiple people together. Or, I mean, it's just general good practice. And we're going to go ahead and do what is called a null check. And that is uh, making an if statement like this. And then we're going to check if the Firepoint variable is equal to null. Uh, and when is it equal, equal to null? Well, it's going to be equal to null if it didn't find a fire point. And then we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a little error message so we know, uh, so we we know what's going on if uh, if we get this error. Instead, something might just not work in the script, and we don't know what's going on, or. It, could give us some weird error message that we don't quite understand. Instead, we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure that we we uh, we get good errors here. So we're going to type debug dot log error, and inside of this, we are going to type no fire point. What? Like this. So freak out basically there cool uh, and now we know what's wrong so in the uh, let's go ahead and make b start with the update function here yeah so update is called once per frame we know this uh, so what we can use the update function for here is to handle all of the stuff with the fire rate so first off let's um, make the logic if our uh, gun is uh, burst fire or just um, what's, it, what's it called single fire so uh, if our gun is single fire meaning that if we press the mouse button it will only fire once we uh, are going to check for this to say by saying if fire rate equ is equal to zero meaning it's single burst we will uh, then check if we get a button down called fire. So we're going to check if we actually are pressing a button. So input dot get button down. And the button we're going to be using is fire one. If this is not set up on your Unity instance, sometimes it's just not set up. It should be by default, but things happen. So if it's not, uh, you could either go ahead and, and set it up in the input manager, or you could just do input.get key down, and then use key code, um, and then dot whatever you want to fire with. That's something I often do just to make sure that things will work. But it is generally better uh, to use the get button down because you can have multiple layouts and it's more flexible. So we're going to do fire one. And uh, then we're going to open up some curly brackets. And inside of those, we're simply going to call a shoot function, which we're going to uh, do in a second. So we are just going to call our shoot logic there. Um, then we're going to have uh, another uh, or a, an else statement. So if our fire rate is not equal to zero, then we want to uh, check uh, for button input and uh, then shoot with intervals so that's what we're going to do so if it's not single burst it's automatic and uh, we do this by first checking if we are holding down the button so we're checking get button and not get button down and we're going to do the same button so fire one but we are also going to check if time dot time is larger than the time to fire. Okay, so uh, this might be a little bit hard to understand, but I will explain it in a sec. Let's just first write out the code and then I will explain it. So the time to fire is going to be equal to time dot time plus one divided by fire rate. And then we're going to shoot. Cool. Oops. Space too much there. Awesome. So, uh, oh, that's a colon. Okay. 
so what are we doing here? Well, we are um, first checking, is it a uh, single fire weapon? If it's single burst, we're just going to check if we get a button down and then simply shoot. If it's not single burst, we're going to check if we're holding down the button. So we're going to check for the button call. And then we're going to also check if the time.time .time is bigger than time to fire. So the time to fire variable we are using uh, as basically um, the place in time where we are going to have our next shot. And we are setting this uh, by doing this. So we are setting the time to fire to be equal to the current time plus the fire rate. Or 1 divided by fire rate, but that's so we can make it a rate and not a um, uh, delay. Mm, it's it, that you don't even need to think about that, just know that this is how it's done. So um, that's all we're doing. We're saying that the next time we're going to fire is going to be the time plus the rate uh, or plus the delay. Uh, and then we're going to wait. And when the time is past that delay, uh, meaning the next time to fire, we're going to shoot. So that's basically it for that. And uh, now we can go ahead and make our actual shooting uh, function.